What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back at the dealer auction here in Oklahoma City. Let's jump into this video today. Let's see how many repos we can find and maybe even a couple cop cars. We're going to start this video off with a BMW Z4. Unfortunately, it's only the 2.5, so this isn't something I'd really be all that interested in. If you remember, I don't know, a couple years ago, I got one of these. What? Well, it was the 3.0. It was the 3.0. I got it from Copart, and it had some suspension damage to the driver's side front. Like, the wheel was literally hanging when the loader lifted it up. The whole suspension was dangling underneath it. Uh, we did some work to that one. I mean, I put some money into it. We fixed it up. We put some nice new wheels on it, new tires new suspension, and I loved that car. It absolutely killed me to have to sell it. It was so much fun to drive. Now, the 2.5, like I said, I, I've i never driven one, so I can't really speak on its performance, but for me, I'm just kinda, you know, no. No, I want the six, man. I want the six. Hell, I don't know, the 2.5 may be a six. What I'm trying to say is I want the bigger engine. <laughs> That's really what I'm trying to say. Even if the 2.5 is a straight six, and it is, it is a straight six, look at that. See, I'm not a BMW guy. I don't know these things. And I'm not afraid to admit it. I don't know these things. It's still a straight six. I still want the 3.0 though. That's all there is to it. I want the 3.0. All right, it's, it's rough, you know. It's a pretty rough little car. It's probably got some miles on it. Doesn't have any stickers on it, so. Uh, I'm not overly interested in this one, but I think we can all agree the Z4 is a sharp looking little car. Now, are we ready to get in to repossessions? Guys, there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot. Oklahoma, it's not a small town, Oklahoma City, but it's not exactly a giant town. As far as population, it's got a lot of people. There's a lot of land. Oklahoma City is spread out over a very large area but it's just not that big and to see this many repos by the way if they're sitting in this section this is all repos i don't care if it's got a sticker from santander or exeter any of those ally financial doesn't matter doesn't matter if the sticker's on it or not these are all going to be repos now obviously i'm not interested in all of these vehicles uh again see what i mean smashed up and damaged same thing back here smashed up and damaged it, it, it truly saddens me to see this kind of stuff, man. It, it really does. This is not funny for me. Uh, and it's not just about getting some content either. This is, this is bad news for our economy, for our people. Chrysler Capital. Ugh, smashed, you know, again. Here we got another one, Santander. Smashed. This is, this is just a bad deal all the way around. I hope we can get things turned around in this country. I really do because interest rates are through the roof. <sighs> Look at this, smashed. Again, all repos, guys, all of them. Oh, no, 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 no. This is what I've been looking for. Oh, man, this is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm sorry guys, I was gonna try to stay away from trucks today. I really was, and I've done really good. Look at all the Rams I passed up, and you know I love my Rams, but that's not what I'm looking for. This is what I'm looking for. I noticed it's got a little bit of damage, but this is a Denali. It's damaged right here, a little crease, definitely damaged right here. It's definitely damaged right there. That's the thing, man, these people stop caring and and then they just drive the drive until the wheels fall off so they probably stop taking care of them as far as maintenance and stuff is concerned if they ever took care of them at all you know what i love on this though look at that american flag tell me that ain't beautiful tell me that is not beautiful right there tinted windows looks like they tinted the windshield too which is illegal so i'll have to get that taken care of if i were to get this let's take a look at the interior oh it's got the screens yeah third row seat is still back there Unfortunately, this isn't the long wheelbase. I really prefer the long wheelbase, but I could work with this. Is it four-wheel drive? Yes, it is. It's got, see, this is what I'm talking about. I've said it in other videos. Trailer brake. They should all come with them. They should all come with them. A little bit of a rattle when it first started up. That's not entirely abnormal. It may have been sitting for a while. We're gonna turn 
So we're gonna turn that radio down. We're gonna make sure the air condition is on full blast. All right, let's see what we got here. We got some outlets, USB ports, cup holders, uh, QI charger, storage with cigarette ashes everywhere. Cigarette ashes absolutely everywhere in this thing. So that's nice. You got all your important stuff for your windows and your mirrors, your headlights, your four x four, which is nice. And your trailer brake controller, that is really nice as well. And here's another thing that I, I really need with one of these air conditioned seats. Air conditioned seats, absolute must. Does the screen work up and down? Yes, it does. And the reason, one of the main reasons I like this over the Escalade, there's a couple, but number one, is the integrated trailer brake controller. That is a big deal to me. I just love the factory look of it. Um, and number two are these controls. Buttons and knobs, physical buttons and knobs. Don't get me wrong, the Escalade is nice, obviously. I mean, you'd be a fool to say the Escalade is not nice. Escalade is nice, absolutely. But, but, let's keep it real, all right? <laughs> The Escalade screen is notorious for failing. The Cadillac user experience, it's called the Q, C-U-E. It's notorious for failing. It's not a huge deal to fix, nor is it all that expensive, but it's a pain in the behind. This doesn't fail. I don't think this is touchscreen. It is touchscreen, I didn't even know that. This is touchscreen, I had no idea. But you got all your physical buttons. You can touch them and turn them and move them, and guess what? They don't fail like the screens tend to. Air conditioning is ice cold. The AC seats work, it does have some miles on it, which, you know, that can be a little concerning. It, it can be, especially knowing these engines, um, they have that lifter problem. They do, they'll, uh, they'll start off slow and misfiring and they'll start tapping just a little bit before you know it, you need a whole engine. And I don't know what they cost, but I'd imagine putting an engine in one of these is very, very expensive. This is not the 5.3. If I'm not mistaken, this and the Escalade both share the 6.2. There's damage on the hood as well. It's creased. The windshield is cracked. So the windshield needs replaced anyway. 6.2 right there. That's what I'm talking about. And it runs great. Sounds good. I don't hear anything concerning coming from it. It's just a matter of time though. And I'm here to tell you, there's a lot of people that think that all you have to do is plug in. They have these little, uh, like these little scan tools, they're tuners. And you just plug them in and it disables the displacement on demand. It, it turns off the uh, engine's ability to turn on and off the displacement on demand. And they think that if you use this tool, it's like a couple hundred bucks, you plug it in, you turn it to where it only runs in eight cylinder mode all the time and it will not fail. Well, I've done a lot of research, extensive research on these. I've been on all of the forums. I'm, I'm here to tell you, a lot of the people that went and used that device, they plugged it in and they turned it into eight cylinder mode only, the lifter still collapsed still collapsed and it still wiped out the engine even though they were using the tool to deactivate displacement on demand. So it's a crapshoot with these. You don't know when, where, how, but you do know that they will fail catastrophically. So when you buy one, it's very important that you understand and you budget for the possibility of needing a replacement engine. And then let's not forget, the transmissions weren't exactly bulletproof on these either. So this one has heads up display and everything. This is a very nicely optioned uh, Denali. This is very nice, I like it. The seat's a little too far forward. Backward, forward, I could take this on a drive, but honestly, I'm not gonna make this video about trucks. This is more just kind of a personal thing uh, for me that I'm looking at, and I can't drive it anyway. I didn't. I just now saw that it's completely out of gas. It has nothing left in the tank. I am curious what the fuel economy was like on this, though. TPMS is working properly. 38% oil life. So it's gonna need an oil change soon. There is that V8 mode, which I hate that they go V8 and and V4. It calls it. Um, over the last 9,661 miles, it's gotten. 18.9 miles a gallon, which is not bad. Just to give you an idea, my Chevy SSR, I'm averaging around 18, 19 miles a gallon in my SSR. So for something this big and heavy, it's really not bad at all. I am putting this one 
on my watch list. Real quick before I go any further, if you've noticed a change in the video quality, I have had to reduce my resolution from 4K down to 1080, and I apologize for that, but I have been fighting camera overheating issues for years coming out to these places and filming, especially when it's really hot and humid like it is today. These things will just shut off and then you gotta sit and wait for 10 minutes to cool them down and you gotta try again. It's a major pain. I'm not gonna take up much of your time. I just wanna say that is why we have gone from 4K back down to 1080. At 1080, my battery lasts all day. The camera never overheats, it never shuts off and it enables me to just get the job done. So if there has been a noticeable reduction in video quality, that's why I do apologize, but while it's hot like this, I gotta do what I gotta do. All right, so we're gonna continue on down the line because we're looking at all of these repos and there are a lot of them, guys. I, I mean, so many repos over here. Now, I haven't really seen too much that I'm interested in looking at or showing to you guys, but we're gonna walk over here as well. I mean, I, it's just, it's row after row of repossessions out here. Of course, lots of Ultimas, Maximas, things of that nature. Oh man, an Impala. I love this Impala. It's pouring antifreeze out of it though, so I'm gonna avoid that one. Oh, no, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna do it. Gah. No, I'm not gonna do it. I won't. We'll continue. Mercedes, all oh, Santander. Boy, I'll tell you what, Santander's taking a, uh, what is this? Audi Sport International.com. Okay, I guess. Look at all these repos. This is crazy, guys. Look at this beautiful Ram 3500. Also a repo. Good lord. Moving into Chrysler Capital now. Wow, oh, oh, look at the, look at the RT. I'm a sucker for a Challenger. Okay, Chrysler Capital. I like this, I like this. Let's see if it's damaged. It's got good tires, body and paint looks good. There's a good size ding right there in the, in the line. That sucks, but not a big deal little ding over there the paint is in rough shape but it's not hail damaged and it could be corrected you've got the hound's tooth interior oh let's fire this one up 43,000 miles on the odometer it is out of gas these are all out of gas I had some of you say, I bet it's the auction taking the gas. It's not the auction. The auction needs these to have gas in them, guys. <laughs> you gotta understand that. These cars need to have gas in them because the auction, the auction people have to come out here and they drive them all the way around and then they drive them through and then they park them. And they have to do this week after week, assuming they don't sell and a lot of them don't. Uh, so they need to have gas in them. So I think what it is, the repo companies are snatching the gas out of it. It's got to be because these guys out here, they end up having to come out and put gas into them just so they don't run out of gas running through the auction. There's a lot of damage here that I missed. I'm seeing more damage. Damage all through there. A lot of damage right here. A lot of damage there and even more creases right here on the back. I mean, it's not a deal breaker. It's not the end of the world or anything, but it's important to really look these over. Pretty big ding right there. You gotta look these over. Love the car. I'm not really looking for a, not really looking for a Challenger right now though. Like I said, I'm kind of over the whole Mopar thing. It's got more dings all over here too. I'm kind of over the whole the whole Mopar thing, but I still love them. You know what I mean? It's a love-hate relationship. I love them. I just don't love the stigma that's attached. Santander, Santander. This one doesn't have a sticker, but that's a repo. Santander, boy. Santander's taken a hit lately, aren't they? Wow. These are all Santander as well. You tell me there's not a problem, all right? You look at this and you tell me there's not a problem with all these repossessions out here. It's a crying shame, man. 
Oh, the new Ford Ranger. All right, I kind of like this. I kind of like this. Ranger XL. If I remember right back in the day, the XL was just kind of the, is the basic bottom of the barrel trim. It was being used as a work truck. So somebody was using it. I don't see anything for towing though. I see hooks, but I don't see anywhere for there to be a hitch on it, unless it's hidden. Pretty small truck. It's got the leather interior though. And carpet, so it's not an actual work truck. 36,000 miles on the odometer. I'm not here looking at Rangers though. Just kinda, kinda like it. Santander, Santander, Santander. Boy, there's a whole bunch of Santanders out here, guys. Whole bunch of them. Another Elantra. And moving on up, we're getting to the end of the line here. Then we're gonna have to uh, go take a look at those cop cars. Oh, no, that's nice. That's nice. I like the Z71. 2019, 84,000 miles scratched up everywhere uh no leather seats worn out it's got 24 000, no 2419 idle hours it's got 84,000 miles on the odometer toyota sorry hate them no offense uh nissan like this though i think this one's been here for a while i remember seeing this before i'm certain i've seen this one out here before and now it's a chrysler capital i swear this has been here I swear I've seen this one out here before. You just don't see very many of these floating around anymore. You really don't. I'm certain we've seen this. So it looks like somebody got it. <laughs> and it, uh, it ended up right back at the auction as a repossession. Look at that Rubicon. Beautiful Rubicon. You know what I noticed? There's a lot of, a lot of Mopar products out here being repossessed. You know what I mean? I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of... Uh, Chrysler, Ram, Dodge, whatever you want to call them. Fiat. There's a, there's a lot of them out here. All right, guys. Like I said, I wanted to show you the repo side of things because there's definitely a problem. And uh, I feel like more people need to be addressing it. And I think it's important that people understand if you're going to get your car repossessed, look, it's embarrassing. Uh, I'm here to tell you, I've had many cars repossessed back in my day. It's not like I'm sitting here acting like I'm better than everybody else. I'm not. It's, it's happened to me many times. The difference is, though, now that I'm older, I understand better how these things work and how they affect the economy overall. So it's really important if you, if you can't pay for your car, if something happened, if you just you know, let your debt get out of control or you lost your job, whatever the case is, if you're going to get your car repossessed, look let it go i know that's hard to accept especially when you don't have any money to go buy another car i've been there myself man and getting a car repossessed is the most humiliating thing that can happen you're sitting at a parking lot you know at walmart or something getting groceries you come out your car is gone i've had it happen to me but what i'm telling you is when you go and damage or destroy the car to get back at the finance company it's not the finance company's fault that you didn't pay your car note you know, it's not their fault that you couldn't pay for your car. So don't destroy it. All you're doing is shooting yourself in the foot and you're hurting the economy in the process. Let me explain. Let's say this was your car. And let's say as the repo guy is coming to get it, you start smashing it, right? Because you're, you're not going to let them get you. They're not going to get you for your car. If they get the car back, it's going to be destroyed. Great. Good for you. Good for you. So you've now, you've now trashed the car. Well, here's what happens. This car goes to auction, just like it is, right? Smashed up, here it is, it's smashed. It's going to auction, guess what? It ain't gonna bring nothing at auction. So you taught the finance company a lesson, didn't you? You showed them, no you didn't, <laughs> no you didn't. Because the, the finance company, let's say they sell this for $1,500 and you owe 15,000 on it. All right, so 15,000 minus the $1,500 that they sold it for at auction, you owe that balance. And they're going to sue you in court for the remaining balance owed on this car. Now maybe they could have sold it for 10 and you would have ended up owing five. Well, not anymore. 10, you would have ended up owing five on it. Well now because you trashed it, 
you end up owing almost still the full $15,000. $13,500 is what you owe on this. And you may think they'll never get it from me. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised how persistent they can be and how they can garnish your wages and get that money back from you all at the same time while hurting the American economy. Now I'm a sucker for an Impala. It's no secret I love these silly things. 2016 with 120,000 repossession. I don't know if it's an LTZ, but it might be. Yeah, I think it is. We got the leather interior. This is this is nice. No sunroof damage back here. It is LTZ right there. LTZ Limited. It's scratched up pretty good and it's not in the best shape. But that just means it's not going to go for a whole lot of money. It's pretty messed up. Cigarette burns everywhere everywhere that's oh oh wow yeah yeah you know what that smells like you already know i knew the minute i saw it what is that oh wow it's dead <laughs> of course it's dead of course it's dead because i wanted to look at it so this is the one that's dead see here perfect example another repo a buick regal completely smashed down the side look at this busted out window it's smashed just smashed and tore up that's a shame i like the regal too smashed headlight let's see if this will run paints all tore up. oh wow oh wow well this is this is bad oh this is uncomfortable no nah, this stinks oh wow i'm not i'm not having much luck here today guys Ooh. All right, listen now. I told you guys we were going to do some cop cars. And here they are. This is one of them. The other one's down the road a little bit. Oh, man. It's been a long time since we've had a legit cop car. In fact, we only ever had one, like, real cop car with the lights. I've had two, but only one of them had the lights and the sirens. This is severely hail damaged. Oh, man. GSA fleet vehicles. I love the GSA sales because they're all going to be government vehicles and a lot of them are cop cars, but I have never seen a fully functioning cop car out here. I haven't. This is the first one. It's still got the cage in the windows, the cage in the back. Busted glass. There's busted glass. All oh, and water all over the floor. Has it got a busted out window? Or did somebody, maybe the hail busted out the window and they replaced it. Oh. Man, stop it, stop it. I got to, I got to. I don't care about the hail damage. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, that sucks. Oh, the floors are all covered in water. They're full of water. Look at this. Oh, wow. I think all the windows got busted out of this something something happened a lot of water got into this car I wonder if they consider this a flood I should have checked the seats before I sat in it fires right up oh there we go there we go low on fuel that's okay that's okay 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 whatever thank you air conditioning let's try it out make sure the AC works what are the mileage? Can we get out any of this stuff? Fuel economy. Here we go. 46,000 miles. Oh, there is water pouring through the floor. Look at this. There's water pouring. What? Where is that coming from? Okay. AC works. The lights are on. Let's see if they function. They do. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. I need... I don't care. I don't care. It is severely hail damaged, though. And my butt is wet. That's great. I thought the seat was dry. It works. I ain't going to do the siren. I'm not going to do the siren. But yeah, look at that. Oh. Guys, I want this car. 
I want this car really, really bad. Really, really, really bad. This is brought in 620 to 23. Well, it's been here a while. This has been here a good while, about a month. I wonder what's going on with it. All right, that's one cop car. Let's go check out the other one. Hey, does this look familiar? Another cop car. And my, my behind is still wet from sitting in that other one. Maybe this one's not wet. Oh, this one must be sold. It's got a dollar sign on the windshield, but it's got severe hail damage. But this one still has all of its windows and it's light. Let's see if it's full of, this one is not full of water. And this one doesn't smell like water either. It's still got the cage in the back. I would love, you know, I'm not entirely sure what the law is regarding owning one of these. Now for off-road use, I'm sure it's 100% fine. There wouldn't be an issue having a car with all of these functioning lights. The problem that I see is driving it on the road. You could get yourself in a lot of trouble. Again, I don't know what the laws are regarding having these lights. They work, but if you don't use them on the street, is that okay? Or is it illegal to drive on the street because it has the working lights and you could potentially use them and impersonate a police officer? That's where I think you'd probably need to consult some type of a lawyer before going out on the road with one of these. I noticed Goon Squad back in the day, they had all of that stuff and they changed it. They changed it all over because of some legality issues. And I'm sure it varies state to state, uh, which is complicated. If you guys remember, I did have one. I had a Charger, an 09 Charger. It was a police car, it was wrecked. We put it back together, we put it on the road. It had all the lights, sirens, and we used them pretty regularly. Uh, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. But if you remember from that video series, we ended up with some police officers, sheriffs showing up at my house. And they had some things to say to me about having, number one, having the car. They tried telling me I wasn't even supposed to have the car at all. And I was like, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, it's mine. I bought it, title's in my name. Uh, I own it outright. Bought it from Copart, legit. And then they were like, well, you can't have these lights. You can't have the sirens. And I was like, well, I don't know what to tell you. They wanted me to bring the car down to their location, which was like 120 miles away. And they wanted to remove all of the stuff. And I told them, I said, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. I said, the whole reason I bought the car was because it had the lights and sirens. I'm not going to, I didn't pay for this so I could give it back to you so you could take all of the tools out of the car. And you know, it ended up, it turned out okay in the end. But it didn't start out very well. It didn't, it didn't start out, it didn't start out good at all. <laughs> test, 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 testing, testing, testing. Oh, <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't. You don't, you don't need this in your life. You don't need this in your life. Or do you? I don't know. <laughs> I want it, I really do, I really want this. This one, like I said, I, I don't think this one's for sale anymore because it has a dollar sign on it. Usually that means somebody bought it and paid for it. But still, wow. There, there's something about a cop car. I, I, there is, there's something about a cop car as long as it's got all the fancy lights and stuff. So cool if you were gonna take it to, uh, to the track or something, right? Imagine, imagine being at the track and having your lights going, turning your siren on. I mean, it's just for fun. That's all it is. It's just for fun, nothing else. The only issue is if I'm gonna have something like this, I wanna be able to drive it. And if it's illegal to drive it because it has functioning police equipment, then I don't want it because having to remove all of that defeats the whole purpose of buying the car. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna get out of here. It is hot as hell today. And I'm not even joking. It is that, it is, Woo! And the humidity is through the roof. I've been out here for several hours with nothing to drink. The vending machines were closed and the kitchen was shut down. So I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna try to cool off, get me some Gatorade, hopefully something to drink, cool down. And then I am going to head off to Indiana where I'll be gone for about a week and a half. Not to worry, there are videos coming out every single day. And some days there may even be two videos. I've spent the whole time that I've been back in Oklahoma, which is all of maybe two weeks, 
working double and triple time to make sure I had plenty of content for you guys so I could go take one last relaxing trip in Indiana before the school year starts and it's back to the grind. So if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, well, hit the thumbs down button, drop the comments down below, and please consider subscribing to the channel. I would truly appreciate it. Until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.